Jan Ashton is the director of REACH Coaching, a coaching and training organization. REACH was established 12 years ago and now has over 30 coaches all over the world. She offers an eclectic approach to ADHD coaching, combining aspects of solution-focused brief therapy and neuro-linguistic -ling programming, or NLP, to enable clients to move forward to positive, supported, and holistic manner in the shortest time possible. She's a formative member of the Institute of the Advancement of ADHD Coaching, the IAAC, who recruited Jan to facilitate the ADHD coach certification process in 2007. And the IAAC is now recognized as the largest ADHD coaching organization in the world. Jan is an experienced presenter and trainer, having worked as a national trainer for Young Minds, the largest children's mental health charity in the UK over the past seven years, and she's developed a number of programs focusing on child mental health and ADHD and ASD, which have been delivered to organizations including Barnardo's, Sure Start, Social Services, Connections, and several local education authorities. I guess that's in the UK, Jan. It says yes. Yes, yeah. okay. So we have Jan here who's going to be presenting a presentation on ADHD coaching and introduction. Good morning everybody and welcome to the introduction to ADHD coaching. Could I have the first slide up please? Thank you. Um, my name's Jan Asherton and I have um, a son with ADHD. I believe I've walked a mile in the shoes of all parents who do have children with ADHD. So welcome to the session. This, um, as the introducer said, is an introduction to ADHD coaching. It's a 30 minute session and there is no way in 30 minutes I can teach you what I need to teach you about ADHD coaching and how it works for kids and adults. So please, if you can, come to the three day program. The three-day program will tell you a lot more about how ADHD coaching works and I think you'll be much more um, enlightened after the three days which start tomorrow. This is my son. My son has severe ADHD. He's 20. He did 12 months at university. Um, he decided he wanted to do economics. He said, Mom, it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be all about money. I'm going to make a lot of money. Um, three months into the program, he quit. And now he skis, as you can see. He's an excellent skier, and he skis in New Zealand. And he wants to turn pro. So, God willing, that will, that will happen for my son. Have you ever felt like this? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Any of your kids ever behave like this? Okay. Or are you more like this? I suspect if you're here or you're here for your kids, you're more like this than this. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you always got. Coaches are agents for change. Our clients come to us when they're ready for change or when they've just had enough. I'm a formative member of IAC the Institute for the Advancement of ADHD Coaching. Coaching is very, very new. And because of this, ADHD coaches have to be extremely professional. IAC oversees coaches internationally. We have standards, ethics, and guidelines. So be assured, if a member of the general public chooses to employ a coach for their child, we have a body to whom we are in accountable. This is very important. 
And this is what IAC decided that the definition of ADHD coaching was to be. It's a design partnership combining coaching skills with a good, strong knowledge of ADHD. The process has the potential to enhance the quality of life, improve performance, and support growth and change. The purpose of an ADHD coaching relationship is to offer support, structure, and accountability. The client or the parents are accountable to the coach for change. The coach and client together explore strengths, talents, tools, and new learning to increase self-awareness and personal empowerment. And finally, together we design strategies and actions and the coach monitors progress by creating accountability in line with the goals and aspirations. As I said, IAC is an international coaching body. We oversee the certification and regulation of ADHD coaching. And ADHD coaches, once they are certified with IAC, are accountable to the organization. So let's move on to what coaches actually do. Maslow, back in the 1940s, was a theorist, and he came up with a hierarchy of needs. At the base of the pyramid, you have basic, very basic psychological needs, and other needs along that base of the pyramid, if those needs are not supported, particularly for people with ADHD, then Maslow said that it's virtually impossible to move up through the hierarchy and reach your full potential. Many of the clients that I work with, particularly teenagers and young adults, do not have the basics in place. They do not get enough sleep. They do not have a healthy diet. They don't feel supported. Occasionally, they don't have shelter even. They get into debt, they can't afford their rent, and sometimes they're out on the streets. This is not always the case, I have to say. So Maslow's hierarchy is really quite significant. And if you don't have the basics in place, it all falls apart. So coaches start with the basics. I'm sure many of you with kids with ADHD have experienced the difficulties that they have with sleep. A sleep-deprived child with ADHD has the ADHD symptoms and then some on top. You know what it's like if you don't get sleep, how irritable you are, what a short attention span you may have. We'll put that on top of ADHD and it makes life really difficult. Moving down the list, relationships. You know, often kids with ADHD find it really difficult to keep friends. They make friends easily, but keeping the friendship going is a real struggle to them. Coaches can teach them about social skills, about relationships, what makes a good friend. Oftentimes, they will pick a friend who is not really a good friend. So coaches teach them the right way to do things in the basic way, according to Maslow. One of the aspects of coaching that I really, really enjoy is teasing out the positive things in the kids, young people and adults that I work with, encouraging them to be their best. There are often hidden talents, strengths, amazing abilities going on that are untapped. And as you may have heard in previous lectures yesterday, self-esteem can mask, low self-esteem and poor resilience can mask 
untapped resources. Kids give up very easily. And coaches teach them, no, you don't give up. You pick yourself up, you dust yourself down, and you try again. You don't give up. And this is really important. Sometimes, especially boys, I'm sorry guys, but especially boys, their resilience is sometimes a little bit lower than girls. So a lot of my work is done with building self-esteem and resilience in boys with ADHD. So they can achieve, they can reach their full potential. I don't just work with children, I work with adults as well. Many of my clients are gifted. They are gifted musicians, gifted writers, artists. I also have very um, powerful clients in the field of business, law and medicine. And there is no reason that any of the kids that coaches work with should not be able to achieve, achieve on an equal level with their peers. If they get the right accommodations in school, their resilience and their esteem is built, they are in a good, strong position to achieve equally to their peers. As ADHD coaches, we have to remind our clients what's important. Often, priorities become mixed, confused, and muddled. So we remind them what is important. We keep our clients on track. ADHD people are excellent at wandering. We get them on track and they divert us this way. We call it going off down a, a rabbit hole, down a burrow. So then we have to bring them back. No, this is our goal, this is our target, we stay on track. We offer insight. Sometimes people with ADHD just don't get it. They don't get the social rules and they often don't get what other people get. So as a coach, we can enlighten them and encourage them and teach them, this is the way it's done. This is the way to get where you need to be. We support change. Change is difficult for people with ADHD. We support that change. We encourage them. And we bring the future into now, a little bit at a time. This is what Barclay says. That you need to bring the future into the present for people with ADHD a little bit at a time. Because they live for now. They don't live for two hours away, or a week away, or a year away. They are not good at delaying gratification. All of education is delayed gratification. ADHD coaches encourage their clients to stick with their learning, to stick with their education. We also encourage and allow for safe rehearsal. Oftentimes, kids don't know how to make and keep good friends, and they get it all wrong. So we teach them how to behave, how to be a good friend, how to interpret facial expressions, the, the non-verbal aspect of communication is a significant part of social communication. ADHD, ADHD kids are too impulsive to spend the time to watch somebody's facial expression, their non-verbal communication. So they miscommunicate, they misunderstand all the time. So safe rehearsal of new skills, of social ability, is very important for a child, a young person, or even an adult to be able to practice with somebody who has a good understanding of where they are. Some other aspects of what we do, we teach our clients about ADHD. And ADHD isn't all doom and gloom and, and difficulty. People with ADHD have some remarkable skills and talents. We teach them how to bring these out. 
And you may have learned in previous sessions that it's unusual for ADHD to exist in isolation. There is usually at least one other condition which coexists. So we teach them about their comorbid difficulty also. We magnify strengths, we minimize weaknesses. Very importantly, we identify and navigate around barriers. We employ previously successful strategies. What we say is, if something has worked before, it can work again. Let's try it. If it worked before for you, let's try it again and see if it works this time. Sometimes it may take a little bit of modification. Other times it works beautifully. We network. We work with teachers, doctors, parents, brothers and sisters, aunties, uncles, grandparents, you know, anybody who wants information about ADHD coaching and how to get the best in place for this child. Eliminating false beliefs is very important. By the time a child is around seven or eight, their sense of themselves, their esteem, their sense of who they are, is starting to be developed and embedded. If as a child in the classroom you are repeatedly told, you're naughty, you're stupid, why did you make that mistake over again? How are you going to feel about yourself? You're not going to feel good. Most kids spend more time in school than they do with their parents. Teachers have a significant role to play, a difficult role, I accept, a significant role to play in eliminating these false beliefs. And I work with teachers regularly to encourage them to separate the behavior from the child. Very important. It's important to tell the child, I don't like what you did. What you did is unacceptable, but you're okay. As a person, you're okay. And we encourage children to understand that it's not that they're not okay, it's the behavior that needs modifying. And again, I can't stress enough, coaches work on esteem and resilience. Very, very important. It's almost not worth us working with somebody until we have built our self-esteem up. They're not going to try because they failed in inverted commas so often. They're not going to try if their esteem and resilience is not good. Oftentimes people are sent to an ADHD coach. A parent will call me up and say, please see my kid, my kid is driving me crazy, he's failing at school, I need some help. <clears throat> and what I say is, who wants the help? Is it you or is it your kid? And that's really important. If they don't want the help, if they don't want the coaching, if they don't want the support, they're not ready. You have this on the one hand, and on the other hand, we have the opportunity with very young kids to build a positive, supportive, nurturing relationship with a child in order for them to be able to move forward. And this is what we can do. We can assess their suitability and their readiness for coaching. We look at the stage of motivation that they're at, and we start to edge them around to taking some action to be motivated and ready to make changes. We ask children and young people, how do you want things to be? Not how do your parents want things to be? How does your teacher want things to be? How do you want things to be? And then we work on goals. What are your goals? You know, most kids want something very simple. I want to be on the, the soccer team. I'm never picked for the soccer team. They don't do rules very well, these kids. I want to be invited to parties. You know, how many of the kids that you know with ADHD 
are frequently left out of party invitations. It's very important to a child to be able to attend these functions and to feel good about themselves. So we look at areas for change and then we agree with the parents how we're going to work with the child. What's the best time of day? Do they prefer to um, do speaking? You know, do they prefer to talk? Do they prefer to play? You know, what's the best way to build rapport and to work with this child? And then the core of what we do is to set goals. We would agree a maximum of four goals with a child, goals that were realistic to them, meaningful to them, goals that were motivating, powerful, and very importantly, that they were achievable in the time available. ADHD coaching is really quite brief. Therapy can go on for many years, but coaching, we usually see change in the first two sessions, and usually we can exit after six to eight sessions. We then hand over to the parents, parents take over, and we act as a resource. Parents can email us, telephone us, and we will give information and support them in that way. It's important that we monitor our clients. As I said, they often go down a rabbit burrow, so we have to keep bringing them back. No, this is the path, this is where we're going, so we monitor them. And in this way, we get regular feedback, and we give regular feedback. We use text, and we use email. These are great ways of communicating with people with ADHD because they're quick. You get, usually get an instant response if it's a text, and I find that most of my clients respond well to text and email communication. When we're working on a goal with a kid, we look at what may get in the way of them achieving their goal. And we call these barriers to success. And a barrier to a coach is a challenge. We don't allow barriers to get in the way. We find ways of working around the barriers, whereas usually people with ADD will crash through the barriers and create huge problems and mayhem. As coaches, we find ways around the barriers, and this works really well. And once we've renegotiated a new goal, we can then celebrate, celebrate success for achieving the goal. And I did have some wonderful fireworks noises going on here, but it, it's not working for me today, so I apologize for that. So if you could just imagine fireworks in your head, this is how we celebrate. We make a big deal out of a, a kid achieving a goal, you know, for sticking to the plan, working hard. They get certificates, they get stickers, they often parents will reward them with something that is very meaningful to them. This is kind of a summary of what we do. Minimizing weaknesses, maximizing strengths. Barclay, who's a very uh, predominant researcher in the States on ADHD, talks about taking action at the point of performance. The point of performance is the point at which you are actually doing something. So if a kid does something well in school, the teacher needs to reward them in that instant, at that moment. It can be a quiet word, well done, good job. It can be a sticker. These kids are very visual, so I will often use um, a jar that we put tokens in, so they see the tokens going in. And this builds up a reward when you have 20 tokens. They can see it happening. When you have 20 tokens, you'll get your reward. So we take action at the point of performance. And likewise, if they make a mistake, if their behavior is off track, 
They have an instant reminder. This behavior is not okay. This is how you behave. This is not okay. This is okay. An instant reminder. We're motivating and inspiring. We know what needs to be done. We inspire clients to take action. And here's the science bit. I'm not a scientist, but here is some science for you. We nag here, we nag the pre prefrontal cortex, which is just here behind your forehead. A sluggish, a slow prefrontal cortex is what's going on in people with ADHD. And we're constantly reminding, did you do this? If you haven't done this, when are you going to do it? Why haven't you done it? Can we try it a different way? Constantly nagging, reminding, come on, let's get going. It's time to take action and do something now. We provide structure. We provide accountability. Clients are accountable to us for their actions. And we teach about the condition. This is how coaching works in action. The coach comes in and assesses the client. Not everybody is suitable for ADHD coaching. And if you want to know more about this, please stop me. You'll see me around the conference for the next week. Please come and ask me if you have any questions that I don't answer today. So we come in and assess. We set goals. We agree the goals with our clients. We monitor our clients towards their goals. We motivate and inspire. We evaluate. We see how they're doing. We say, yeah, you've achieved your goals. It's time to set new goals. Or it's time to finish coaching. You did a good job. You've achieved your goals. It's time for us to finish. Five minutes. Thank you. Coaching for kids must be fun. It must be their goals. We use the visual. ADD people are highly visual because of the short-term short -term working memory deficits. We use social stories, visual timetables, planners, and comic strip conversations. We work with parents, teachers, lots and lots of esteem building, and we teach, teach to the ADHD client's strengths. Teens are a bit different. Teens can be tricky. Again, we have to work to their goals. If they don't want to do it, it's not going to work. Academic achievement is important for teens. They may not see it as important, but we do as parents. Their friends are important. Medication compliance is often an issue, so we encourage them to take their medication. Motivation is often a big issue. Achieving balance in a teen's life is often a struggle for parents. And coaches can come in and say, you know, well, you're doing this and you're doing that. You're doing too much of this. Let's see if we can reduce this so you can achieve that. And we use the visual. We use scaling, which again I'll be teaching about in the next three days. We use the miracle question. And we use guided imagery. Often anxiety and stress is an issue with teens, so we teach them how to relax. For adults, we teach them again about ADHD. We offer them structure, accountability, we teach them how to stop procrastinating. Procrastination, again, is a big issue with adults. And everything is really practical for adults. We use planners, timetables, all sorts of um, electronic devices to remind them of appointments, meetings, um, schedules to pay bills, etc., etc. We also work with adults on their relationships, and sometimes employment is an issue with adults.
I'd just like you to think for a minute about what you've done today to make you feel proud. And this is what we talk to about, talk about to, to our ADD clients. It's important to do something every day that makes you feel good, that makes you feel proud. And we ask our clients, what have you done today to make you feel proud, to move you towards your goals, and to enable you to make changes? This is what we do for our clients. We hold up the mirror and let them see who they can really be. We unlock their potential. And we feel privileged to be able to do this. You may have heard of life coaches. Sometimes life coaches are called vanilla coaches. And they work on different aspects of somebody's life, but they really, really don't have the power of an ADHD coach. ADHD coaches are different. It's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening.